Yep, great. Great. Uh, so I'm Anna Kiara. I'm a data science graduate in Novo Nordisk, and uh, I worked during my first rotation of this program into the biostatistics uh, health technology assessment team, along with Pepa, who's a principal statistician also uh, in this team. And um, uh, during this period, we have identified in practice a need for um, an application and something easy to use for our stakeholders and for our statisticians to, to fit this indirect treatment comparisons model, which we use a lot in the um, as a first step for the health economic modeling in practice. And uh, what are you going to see in the presentation is uh, kind of a, a use case, uh, like this was built upon some use cases that we had. However, we had to, of course, quick disclaimer, anonymize the data. So you're not going to see, it's not going to look very real, this uh, use case. And uh, the material has, of course, been readapted for external presentation. And the views uh, presented here are mine and of PEPAS and not of Novo Nordisk. So we're going to go through the background. So why do we use indirect treatment comparisons in the company? Uh, what our vision is for this tool, uh, a little bit our code base and uh, the shiny app. And then what are the improvements that we want to implement and uh, the aspirations uh, for this application? So regarding the background, uh, we use indirect treatment comparisons mainly when there is no uh, direct comparison, a head-to-head -head comparison in the trial between two drugs, two treatments that we want to uh, analyze between our drug and a competitor's drug. So one of the uh, most important applications in the company is to do some market research to understand how the competitor landscape is looking like and uh, whether it would add some value to enter that field to understand how, for example, the competitors compare to each other and how much would be required uh, in terms of results uh, and uh, kind of difference in efficiency uh, from our perspective. Uh, another very important um, application is to inform phase three trial design, because sometimes there might be some evidence gaps from the phase two, for example, where some there is some competitor drug which has not been included head to head to the trial. And the people working on the protocol would like to know how much variability can we expect from statistical analysis to, uh, to be there. And so how reliable would this statistical analysis be? Sometimes it's used for regulatory, but uh, the biggest use case for us is uh, ITCs to inform reimbursement choices and so to submit to HTA bodies. Um, as this is the first input to health economic modeling. And for this, we found the need to standardize the whole process of the data gathering, scale and accelerate the delivery of these results to uh, other parts of the organization like market access uh, with which we collaborate very closely. So our vision is that, of course, this tool should allow for improved communication between ourselves and our stakeholders uh, and facilitate this collaboration because if it's a live tool, it can be very much used for just also talking on the tool and uh, giving the results kind of real time differently from you know, getting in a call, uh, getting out of the call, doing your results, and then scheduling something new. This takes a lot of time internally. And our ideal state, our ambition is that the tool should be able to generate submission ready reports. Uh, this is a very ambitious goal. Um, and for now, this was kind of a proof of concept, a prototype uh, of also to understand what could be done in a few months. And um, but this is what we would really like to have, some streamlined HTA submissions uh, that would, along with like enhancing efficiency, also kind of minimizing what the, the number of errors and mistakes that you had that you do while coding a little bit. And most of the times, not everyone has a reviewer ready to review their code. So uh, you need to check uh, many times. And in these situations, you really cannot have mistakes. Um, and of course, to have something like that, we really need to customize the reports uh, based on the needs from HTA bodies. And one important thing is that usually we have technical support documents from uh, the HTA bodies where we know 
more or less exactly what they need, what they want to see, what do they accept based on previous submissions, uh, and how can you also like push it a little bit. And so making it customizable so that you could click a button and have a report for nice or a report for cut it. Uh, it is, should be reproducible and it should also be used to reproduce results, for example, from externals, from competitors uh, that have been published because the data that we use in this um, application is mostly, of course, aggregated data, is not uh, data from single patients as this analysis, uh, that's what's required. And uh, Lastly, of course, uh, we really care about compliance. So I really relate to the previous um, uh, presentation where, of course, it's uh, very hard to get tools from the outside. And this is also why we identify the need to actually build this internally, uh, because it's easier for us to make sure that everything is internal and uh, to also have our stakeholders trust what is happening. and it's uh, easier to give them access to the data and access to the tool which we published on the internal POSIT Connect server uh, for, uh, for internal use. But let's get into a little bit of the code. I hope that you can see this moving soon. If you can give me a sign uh, because I cannot see you. I'm just over here in the video. Can you see the video going? Yes. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, so this is a little bit how the code looks like. Uh, let me start again. So uh, we have uh, a um, script for the app and a script where we have all the utils functions for rendering uh, the plots, uh, wrangling the data, and uh, of course, some modeling functions. Uh, we have uh, based everything on the multi-NMA package for in CRAN which is, uh, give, gives a lot of flexibility for the analysis that you want to do. And uh, I didn't mention that we have identified the need mostly for very simple use cases. Uh, for example, anchored comparisons in the ITC, where you have an anchor for all the treatments, which is common, for example, placebo. And uh, this, uh, this library allows you to do, of course, that, but also more complicated things in a way that if we ever get to something different, we're able to quickly um, uh, switch to that. And this is how the uh, code base look like for the body, where you have all these uh, select uh, uh, inputs and uh, switch switches, where you can just say, for example, fit the consistency or not, or um, yeah, all these um, small inputs for the, for the user that I will also show uh, later in the actual application. So the UI is simply composed of this uh, uh, body header and uh, the sidebar uh, where we have four pages. And uh, then we have the server where the actual code in the background is happening. We have different observe events where we give some alerts to the user for saying, for example, oh, until you input the data, nothing is going to happen. And the data is uh, in inputted as a reactive object. In this way, the user can just browse the folder and upload any data, and the app is going to change based on the data that it's inside. And uh, for this reason, uh, we have to kind of uh, update the inputs uh, after they've been selected, the data has been selected because the inputs depend on what data we have inside. So for us, it was also a lot about the data standardization, what data are we putting in? And this is a long format data where each, each column has kind of a specified name, which uh, is uh, also explained uh, at the beginning of the app. And um, uh, inside that column, we can have all the specific names. For example, we have a column for the variable. And inside the variable column, we have all the different variables that were measured for that specific trial, for example. So um, and regarding the modeling part in particular, uh, we have a queue where we store all the models that the user wants to fit. Um, and this uh, is defined by different things like, I don't know, the uh, number of chains and all the uh, chains uh, statistics, uh, the priors that uh, are going to be used and so on. 
Uh, and uh, I also defined some uh, specific buttons that were not into the shiny functionality, for example, to remove a row from this queue, because for us, the most important thing is that we do a lot of scenario simulations and uh, sensitivity analysis, and we want to be able to just uh, put those models in a line and let them go and uh, and just uh, do something else in the meantime. Uh, and uh, this is very powerful for us. Um, and uh, this is why we defined it in this way. Uh, and the other part is, of course, a download of the reports where we are just creating a, a R markdown file uh, that is read uh, in a kind of a for loop because we have different models, of course. So we want to have the same information for all the models. Um, I think we can go to the next step, which is the actual application. Uh, here we have a welcome page uh, with all the details and uh, how are the columns defined. Uh, so you see here we have, for example, the trial column, the dose column, the variable, the variable category, the variable value, and so on, the time points. And um, it, there's a description of how to navigate the app. So we have a how to use page, the input data page, a feasibility part, and uh, the modeling part. You can click on start, and then you can browse a folder. In the video, it's not going to show the folder popping up, but uh, this uh, was me just selecting the data. And uh, here, you're going to see a view of the data set. So how does uh, the data actually look like? And you can see here, you know, it's aggregated data. So for example, you have uh, the number of uh, patients in that treatment, the variable category, this was a max, the value is 17, the variable unit is years, and the variable in this case was age measure that time point zero and so on and then of course um, we also allow uh, the user to actually map the, the name of the column so with these update columns names uh, because sometimes you have different names and uh, and then some simple visualizations which were very important for our stakeholders uh, with interactive plots and also giving some guidance along the way on how to use these plots uh, what to reflect about and also here for example i have this information button but it doesn't really uh, show here again because i was recording my screen uh, but what it was saying is be careful on the distribution values because that's very important when you choose your prior uh, your uh, heterogeneity prior for example scale oh no let me see i can't go over okay yes yes just give me a second i don't know it's if it's stuck Okay. Yes, and here in the feasibility part, we want to understand the heterogeneity of baseline characteristics. So uh, how much they differ between trials uh, in particular, and also within trial, uh, there is a switch here where we can actually have a look at what's the difference in distributions for the different baseline characteristics for um, within the same trial for different uh, treatment assigned. Here we can have instead a look at the uh, heterogeneity between studies on the same edge of the network. So here there's a first visualization on the network for a specific endpoint and time point. And um, we can add more and just have a look and analyze and be sure about what can we include in our analysis. Um, and this is also downloadable so that uh, it can be included in our final report. Um, then here we have the actual modeling part where you can select all of the things uh, that define the uh, actual modeling, fixed effect, random effects. You can also include the regression adjustment, deciding whether the variable would be a prognostic factor, an effect modifier, or both. For now, we can only adjust for one variable at a time, but uh, it's um, coming that we can also adjust for more. Um, and um, yes, there is some small functionalities here and for example here i realized that with the random effects model i wanted a higher target average acceptance probability so then i go to the queue and i remove the uh, one which uh, i didn't need anymore and i fit the models and uh, once you fit the models uh, it starts downloading them the fitting of the model is pretty quick and then the download does take some time because there's a lot of plots involved and when you uh, finish, there is this table, which is a summary of all the models that you fitted. There is only two here for one variable. And um, 
a model diagnostics report shows how the diver if the chains were diverging, if there's autocorrelation, how does it look the uh, residual deviance for each data point, and uh, if there is consistency that can be checked. Uh, there's also a consistency plot based on the node splitting method. In this case, the there were no loops in the network, so we couldn't do that. And then there is a model output report, which is structured as variable, and then all the different uh, models for that specific variable at the specific time point. And uh, for example, here you can see a Sucra plot at the bottom uh, right where we see the um, ranking of the treatments, which is a very intuitive plot uh, that we use a lot. So um, this is how it looks like. And uh, for us, it was very important that uh, when you want to do, for example, uh, again, the analysis, of course, this is reproducible, so a seed should be set. And in particular, uh, when uh, authorities come back at you asking questions, you are able to reproduce the results and uh, tweaking some very small parameters. And maybe um, we also allowed for caching of the models in a way that to reproduce the whole report, if you only want to change one model, that's going to be, um, that is, all the others are not going to be fitted again in practice. So um, this is mostly about the app. Um, I think I'm still on time. And the current, considering the current improvements, uh, we, of course, want to add additional endpoints. This is all driven by what are the use cases that we have internally. And we are exploring that. Uh, and uh, a very important point is the standardization of targeted or systematic literature reviews, which sometimes we have vendors to, and uh, this dependence on vendors uh, can uh, be tricky. Um, and of course, it's also tricky to just extract public data because there is a lot of information and uh, you have to know what do you need for indirect treatment comparisons in particular. Um, and we want to customize the outputs based on HTA bodies. Uh, and these, to have actually the submission, we also need to generate code which can stand alone um, for, for them to then reproduce our results, which have been produced uh, through the app. And um, uh, as a technical development thing, uh, I thought only afterwards to, uh, that would be a good idea to develop the app as an R package instead of a, a standard just project. Um, even though we're doing some dependency tracking, but with an R package, uh, in R, doing the package is the best way to version control uh, the dependencies. And um, in terms of future aspirations, uh, this, we are here mainly to hear other presentations and uh, get feedback uh, in, on this and explore some opportunities also for collaboration because we have noticed that both in academia and other companies, there is a lot of interest in uh, creating these uh, user-friendly tools and actually um, making them available to, to stakeholders and statisticians to um, produce analysis very quickly. Uh, we're also exploring open source possibilities. This is a bit hard also because I'm currently not in this team anymore. So there's no support, um, cause, uh, continuous support. Um, but uh, that would be a very important step. Uh, so for now, the code is not uh, publicly available. And uh, of course, as I said, this was most uh, prototyping and there's still a lot of work to be done for the improvements that I just told you. And uh, I would say that this is it. Um, and if you have any questions, I would be very happy to answer them. Yeah, thanks. Uh, yeah, really uh, useful illustration of, of another shiny app. Yeah. So uh, there's, just, there's one question in the chat that uh, hasn't been answered yet. So does this app allow to run an, an NME for contrast based M -M -N -N -M -E? So I guess. Um, uh -huh. Thing, I guess it's only based on continuous outcomes and binary glass on and D log log. Yes, exactly. Uh, it is contrast based data, uh, but, uh, but yes, um, it can do actually, it can handle both. Uh, that I didn't mention. Uh, and it's very easy with uh, this um, R package that we're using, uh, the multi NMA one. Um, so that's also one of the other flexibility points. And uh, that package can also handle indeed uh, continuous and binary data. Uh, I think survival outcomes is still being developed. Uh, so survival outcomes, there was uh, something happening. Um, 
when I uh, was uh, finishing this project, let's say a couple of months ago. Uh, so I think uh, it's going to be easier once also that happens. Um, yes. Does that answer the question? Um, it does for me, but just see if we get any response from the person who posed the question. Okay, yeah, so he's just made a comment if the survival comes based on log HRs or uh, standard errors of the log uh -huh. HR, then it can be a noise use. Mm -hmm. Yep, and uh, yeah, as you've been very efficient, I've brought a colleague along and she's been answering the chat the questions in the chat. Okay, then I'll read them later, I'm curious. Uh... <laughs> no, it was, it was uh, somebody was asking what packets was being used and uh, yeah, it, if it was possible to... Uh, conduct an anchor anchor comparisons, simulated treatment comparisons, so ML yes. and MRs. Um, so, not yet. Um, we did find in the internet um, a couple of uh, yeah. published uh, apps that were allowing to do mic. Yeah. I think, um, but we, we didn't get to it yet. Um, it, it was very, as Anna was mentioning, a prototype. It started with continuous variables, and we will be adding on. Oh, somebody's asking, uh, would it be possible to save the scenarios models to be uploaded in a future signing session? That's an interesting question. I think so. Yes, I think you, what we could do is uh, to create kind of a log of the parameters and then uh, use those as like, uh, yes. Uh, well, it depends if you can maybe up load them as inputs, probably as default values when you open the app. That could be explored. It's very interesting point. Yes, because every time otherwise you have to just uh, input them again. Uh, it's a very important point. Nice. Yeah, and yeah, we've just got time for this one last question um, about how did you ensure reproducibility when using the set seeds in Shiny? Um, because they've struggled quite a lot with this in the past and ended up wrapping random number generator functions to yeah. ensure the same seed is used each time. Yes. Um, so for now, we've just used the um, uh, seed for the multi-NMA part of it. Uh, so it should still be tested and reviewed that uh, it's uh, actually the same for each user on each session. The random seeds in R are quite tricky, I would say. So that's also a very good point um, and one of our aspirations uh, for sure. And in a sense, this is also something that uh, you struggle. we struggle a little bit with um, just with normal Shine uh, R programs and not just Shiny applications. But I would say, so it's something that comes from R. Uh, so even though if you do our submissions with R, it's uh, pretty similar 